Welcome to another Edgewong Trading Journal review and today a customer who is a day trader sent in his trading journal. He is taking 97 trades with overall a very positive net return. The win rate isn't super high. The average P&L and the profit factor look good at first glance. And what we want to do is we want to see if we can take a profitable trading system and turn it into an even more profitable ones. So that means we want to look for ways to improve his winning trades so he can realize larger winning trades and also to optimize his reward to risk ratio, his approach to exits, and also we want to analyze the trade management. First, we can take a look at the equity graph and I have activated here the tilt meter under options. The tilt meter is here the bar graph in the background and the tilt meter represents how well the trader is executing his trades. When the tilt meter and the bars are rising, it means that the trader is following his trading rules. And when the tilt meter is going down, it means that he has repeatedly broken his trading rules. For the most part, you can see that the positive and rising tilt meter also correlates to a rising performance, which is to be expected. Typically, what you'll see is that when the trader is following his trading rules, he is also making more money. There are periods where the tilt meter is going down and you can see is here, the trader is also losing money. So he has periods where he is making trading mistakes. We can analyze that further. For that, we can go to the chart lab and we can go to our trade comments. Here we have the trade entry comments. When he's tagging his trades with the entered at planned level, he's making quite a lot of money. He has also tagged 63 trades and he's totally made 23,000 US dollar. When he's taking FOMO trades or rushed entry trades, he is losing money. So FOMO for now seems to be an issue. We'll keep that in mind for our further analysis and review during this video. We can also take a look at his trade exit comments. So naturally, when the price hits his target, he's making money. When he stopped out, he's losing money. But this is not really telling us a lot and we can investigate this further. So what we can do is we go to the exit analysis graph and we're going to spend more time in this review with the exit analysis because this graph is for the more advanced traders who want to get to the nitty gritty, who want to analyze how they can get more of their winning trades and how they can optimize their trade parameters. So we go to the advanced filters and under exit, let's take a look at the stopped trades. So this means that the trades where he was stopped out. And what we see here is super interesting. Obviously, those are mostly losing trades. And what we can see is that on the losing trades, the price is rarely moving into his favor. So what seems to happen is that when he's taking a loss, the trades are not moving into his favor at all. So right away from the entry point, he is pretty much almost always in a drawdown mode. And this suggests that on his losing trades, he is never seeing any green PL. The trades fail right from the get go. We can confirm that. And when we clear here the filter, we go to the basic filters and we only want to look at the losing trades. And you can see the same picture applies here. He is taking losses, and on the losses, the price is almost never moving into his favor. What we can see is here the average updraw on the losing trades. Updraw refers to the green bars. So how much has the price moved into the favor during his trades? And you can see on average, the price only moved 13% towards his take profit. So the green bars are very small, and this is here confirmed by the updraw. The average drawdown on his losing trades, so this is the red bar, is 97%. So again, on his losing trades, the price almost never made it to his profit, and he's almost always taking the loss at the full stop loss. So he's most likely using a passive approach and just letting price play out. Let's turn this around and let's take a look at his winning trades. And here we see probably our first issue. We can see here the updraw on his winning trades is 67%, which means that on average, the price makes it 67% towards his take profit target, which is here the green horizontal bar. But when we look at the average exit of his winning trades, it's only 44%, which means that he's exiting his trades not only before the take profit, but also below the updraw level here. The black marker, the black diamond marker, represents the exit here. And what we can see is that his exit is very rarely at the highest point or close to the highest point. You can see here, for example, the exit is very close to the entry and the price would have gone up to 53% on the updraw. Here as well, the price would have made it to his target, but he exited the trade just for barely a break even trade. Here as well, and there are a few more instances. So this tells us that the trader is often leaving money on the table on his winning trades. The price rarely makes us towards his take profit for the full target. 
However, he could be making more money by staying in his winning trades a little bit longer the way it looks like here. Let's go to the trade management graph to confirm that. The green line is the potential performance. The blue line is the actual performance. What you don't want to see is that the potential performance is above the actual performance because it means that potentially the trader could have made more money, but he closed his winning trades too early. As we've seen in the exit analysis, this seems to be true. And this seems to be the first major finding that we can see here in this journal. So this is really something that the trader needs to investigate and needs to be stronger on his exits. He has also tagged 27 trades with the entry comment FOMO, so fear of missing out. And that seems to be an issue. He's losing 8,600 US dollar on those trades. What we can do is we go back to the exit analysis, we open the advanced filters and let's take a look at only the FOMO trades. And you can see for the FOMO trades, pretty much the same holds true. Pretty much all of his FOMO trades are losses except for when the black marker is above here, this horizontal zero line. So we only have three winning trades out of all of those uh, FOMO trades. And we can see that his FOMO trades almost never have a positive development. Just occasionally the price moves a little bit in his favor, but then turns around and hits the stop loss. So FOMO trades don't work out for this trader at all. Of course, sometimes it's easier said than done to just tell the trader to avoid FOMO trades. However, once you realize that you are losing a lot of money on your FOMO trades and your FOMO trades don't have an edge at all because the price doesn't move in your favor at all, often this type of insight can then lead to an actual change in your behavior. Once you really prove and confirm that this is a problem that is costing you a lot of money and there's absolutely no edge. I want to go to the risk distribution next. And what we see is that it's pretty much all over the place here for this trader when it comes to his risk and his realized trades. But the most worrisome thing that we can see is that he has a lot of trades where he's losing a lot of money. So there are 16 trades where he is losing more than 10% per trade. What we can do is in the journal, we scroll a little bit here to the right where we have our return and you can sort this return column as well. So now we have the highest or the largest losses here in this column. And you can see that there are a lot of losses that have very, very high negative values. We can bring that up. Let's go to the advanced trade data. We scroll down a little bit and here he has some interesting custom statistics. And I want to look at those custom statistics next because he is using them very, very interestingly. So for example, he has one custom statistic called trade number of the day. And this seems to be his 15th trade in the day. He should really check and investigate whether taking a lot of trades in a day eventually leads to a loss of uh, focus and concentration. And also the good intentions go out the window. Very often that can be the case. He also uses an entry feeling custom statistic called meh. So that suggests that he's not super happy with the entry. During the trade, he's not feeling great. He has an impulsive trade entry trigger. And when we look here at the psychological factors, you can see he is not having a daily plan and the first trade was a loss. Let's investigate the custom statistics a little bit closer. For that, we go to our chart lab and here we have the custom statistic. This is the entry feeling and you can clearly see that there's a correlation for when he's taking entries where he's feeling confident, he's making a lot of money. When he's calm, the same is true here, but here we get to the entry feelings that are negative. And you can see that he's losing a lot of money. One tip for the trader, he's using a custom statistic called trade session and he's tagging the entry times. This is not necessary and you don't need to use a custom statistic for that because when you go to the chart lab and then you go to the performance by time, you can go and change the period here. So you can not only look at your weekdays, but you can also break it down into even five minute intervals. For this trader, it might probably be enough to look at 15 or 30 minute intervals here to analyze his trading performance during the day. One thing that seemed quite interesting is that in the first half of the day, he is realizing a very good positive performance. This is also true for the second part of the day where he's making most of the money. But here in the middle of the day, he is losing quite a lot of money. One possible explanation that came to my mind is that in the beginning, in the morning, he is still very focused. He has a lot of energy. And then as he takes more trades during the early hours of the day, he's losing his energy, his focus, his concentration, and then he's getting into trades that are not as optimal anymore. 
and then he's losing. Maybe he's taking a lunch break afterwards, and then when he coming when he's coming back, his performance is much better. So one possible suggestion for the trader to try to see if that helps improve his trading is to take a break during the day after his morning session, maybe go for a walk, or maybe just stand up, walk a little bit around, have a coffee, get a drink, do some breathing exercises, and then come back 30 minutes or 60 minutes after and see if this can help you avoid some of the losses where you don't feel on top of your game anymore, and then be refreshed for your afternoon session. When you take a look at his custom statistic called mistakes made, we can see that he has his FOMO custom statistic here, bad thesis, which is costing him a lot of money. So this seems to be the most pressing issue and this needs to be investigated further. When you find a custom statistic that you want to analyze, you can just open your advanced filter and then you can just look for the filter mistakes made. And then here, for example, you can go for the bad thesis and then you can look at your other graphs. For example, we can go back to the exit analysis to see how this trades played out. Of course, you can just look at your equity graph by itself with those trades uh, and those filters applied. And you can see here, this is a really big issue where the traders has a, a, a declining tilt meter and also the equity graph is only going to the bottom right. You can also go to your trade journal and then look at all of those trades that have this custom statistic applied. Also, you don't need to have a custom statistic for win, lose or flat because we already tracked that in Edgewonk and if you want to analyze that, you just go to your basic filter, the outcome and then here you have winners, losers, break even and open trades. So you don't need to use a custom statistic for metrics and things we already track in Edgewonk. Another interesting thing is that he's using a custom statistic called Confluence. And one thing that stands out is that he has a negative outlier here. When he just has singular confluence reason, he's losing money. 35 trades are taking with singular reason, so singular confluence, and he's losing 11,300 US dollar. What you could do is, for example, you can open your advanced filters, you go to your confluence, and then just singular reason is ticked. We can go to our trade comments and then we can see which other parameters and things occur with those types of trades. So 25 trades who have the singular entry reason are also FOMO trades. So it seems like that he is often FOMOing his trades when he wants to get into a trade. The trade might be lining up, but there's just one reason. But one reason is not enough for the trader, as we are clearly seeing in his performance. So there are a few things that we could identify for this trader that could and should help him move forward. The first thing to investigate is the trade management. So how is he managing and exiting his trades? Also looking at his take profits, that should be a high priority for the trader because by looking at the exit analysis graph, it seems like that his take profit is often very optimistic. Very rarely do the trades hit his take profit. And at the same time, he is struggling with his exits because he's often exiting his trades well, well, not only below his take profit, but also well before the trade hits its highest peak. Of course, it's not realistic to expect to exit the trade always at their peak PL. However, by looking at ways to optimize that, the trader could potentially boost his trading performance significantly because it seems like he's leaving a lot of money on the table here. The risk distribution is also reason for concern when we look at his large outliers here. The trades that exceed 10% per trade on a loss and we have seen that this seems to be the case for quite a few trades where he is losing a lot of money on individual trades. When we looked at the trade comments, we can see that FOMO is a big issue for the trader. And he has to realize that just by sticking to his trade entries and his trading rules, he would be making much, much more money. Of course, again, it's easier said than done to just tell the trader to start sticking to the rules and stop breaking the rules. However, once you have those realizations and you see that there is absolutely no edge in breaking trading rules, those insights can lead to an actual change in trading behavior much sooner. The trade management graph needs to be observed and analyzed further because as we have identified clearly, the trader is leaving quite a lot of money here on the table. There's not a lot of sample size, although the trader has taken 97 trades in this journal, you can see that we only have seven trading days in this journal. So I would be really interested to see this trading journal again in maybe one or two months time when the trader is implementing the changes and the suggestions and also has more trading days under his belt. 
I hope this review was helpful. It helped you understand other parts of the Edgewong Trading Journal and how to use them in your own review process.